Good morning, good evening, wherever you're watching from. But let me just ask you this question, and I want everybody to participate with this, okay? So I want your full attention and participate with this little exercise that we're going to do as I start preaching the word of the Lord today. So let me ask you this. When you hear the word peace, what image comes into your mind? Okay. What image? Some of us maybe, you know, as you think about those, the first image that would come, maybe, you know, it's a, a state of rest. Because maybe the image that comes to mind is that you are what? In sitting in the beach, relaxing, or maybe you are just in your hammock, just you know, eat, uh, drinking your favorite uh, favorite uh, sweet tea, relaxing, or maybe it's tranquility, or maybe it's a symbol. When you hear the word peace, it's maybe a symbol like a dove or a um, you know an olive branch. Maybe in one of those. That's what we're going to talk about today. But for the um, the, the character in the Bible that we're going to talk about for Gideon, it is something different. Actually, it's not an image. Actually, when you talk to, if we're going to have a chance to talk to Gideon today, maybe you're wondering who's this Gideon, we're going to introduce, I'm going to introduce him to you today. You're going to see that the image or the piece, it's not an image for Gideon, but it's a person. And we read that and I want you to open your Bible and Judges chapter 6, this is the encounter as we're going through the series, Awesome God. We're talking about an encounter that between people in the Bible that have encountered God and in the process, God revealed his name to them. And one of that name is that Jehovah Shalom. Shalom meaning peace. And look at that in Judges chapter 6, verse 22, at the middle of this encounter. And let's read that. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Ah, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace. Okay, I believe he didn't do this. Do not be afraid, but you are not going to die. Last verse. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it the Lord is peace. To this day, it stands in opera at the Abbey's rites. Wow. Join me in a word of prayer, Lord. Thank you. We ask you, Lord, to speak to us, even as we look at your word today, to understand this word, peace. And what it means is it something that we are familiar with or something different. Give us a biblical perspective, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace is the word today. Actually, to be honest, the word is Jehovah Shalom. That word Shalom is the word peace. Yes, you would define peace. And if you look at Webster Dictionary and Oxford Dictionary, they would define that as the state of tranquility or a state of rest, an absence of conflict. But yet for Gideon, it is something different because he uses the word shalom. Shalom is the Greek word for peace. And as we have studied before, Jehovah is the name of God, Yahweh, Shalom. But this one, this is something different for Gideon because for Gideon, this is something very personal. It's not an imagination. It's not an abstract that he created in his mind. It is something that he had experienced in his life. Shalom is peace. So the way it would be defined as you read the Bible in the Hebrew word is this, completeness or wholeness. Something that is complete. Something that is whole. That's why they, when they say shalom, when they greet you, that means complete. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Something that is complete in your life. And also, when you look at Gideon as well, that when he described it as shalom, shalom, it points to what? To the presence of something else. Something pointing to the presence of something else. And as you can see, he called Jehovah my God, my peace. This is personal to him. It points to God as his peace. So let's, go, let's, let's understand what's going on here. So what is going on here for, for even for, for Gideon to declare this, for Gideon to say this, for Gideon to experience this, what's going on? For us to be able to understand what's going on in the book of Judges, of course, we have to understand what's going on in the nation. Moses was the leader, followed by Joshua, 
Joshua, uh, you know, uh, was led by the Lord to take the Israelites to the promised land. Now they are in the promise, uh, promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. This is where they were been praying for, expecting for, and now they are in promised land. Guess what? Here's the cycle of what was going on in that. They would experience freedom. They were there experiencing freedom. You know, God fulfilling his promise, the freedom that God had given them. And look at this. In this, you would say, at uh, the end of chapter 5, you would see that, you know, Deborah, one of the judges, the ruler, you know, that God gave to Israel, brought, you know, peace. Then the land had peace for 40 years. Peace, once again, rest from their enemies. And here's the cycle of what was going on in that time, in the period wherein Gideon was called. And when he was called, he had experienced the peace of God. And then after that, from freedom, you would see that they would what? Fall into sin. This is the cycle in the life of the Israelite when they were in the promised land. And some theologians would call this the canonization of the nation of Israel. So then after they would commit sin. And again, as you look at the background, you would see again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And for seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. They would experience the freedom, the peace that God would give them. And then after that, they would forget the Lord. They would do evil. They would commit sin. They would disobey God. They would worship the idols. They would commit not only adultery, but idolatry as well. So freedom, sin. And then you look at that and then they move from there and then bondage. As you could see here, the bondage that are brought, Midian, because of the power of the Midianites was so oppressive. The Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in the mountains, uh, mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. So as you could see, you know, when you fall into sin, it will produce what? Bondage or slavery because sin is oppressive. It is cruel, as some translation would say. It is cruel. It affects you and also it affects the people around you. And look at them. And then after that, from bondage, you would see that they would what? Come into humility and repentance. As you could see in this story on verse 6, they would cry out to the Lord. Because they would feel what? The consequence of their sin. And I want you to look up here. Sin has always a consequence. And it's because they are feeling the consequence of sin, then they would, what, come to the Lord in repentance. They would cry out to the Lord. And then after that, you know what would happen? Of course, God would deliver them. God would send someone to deliver them. As you look at this, now again, they would experience freedom. This is the cycle that has been going on. And, and, look, up at, and look at here. And here's what had happened to them. This happened for 400 years. 400 years that God would give them freedom, then they would commit sin, and then after that, they will be in bondage. They would cry out to the Lord in humility and repentance. God would forgive them. God would deliver them. They would experience what? Freedom and peace, and then they would fall back to sin again for 400 years. This is what's going on here when we read the story of Gideon. So now, this imagine this circumstance. They are what? Living in bondage. They're crying out to the Lord. They're living in fear. The circumstance was going around that and God now focuses on Gideon. And now what can we learn? So in, in the story of Gideon, what's the process for Gideon and what, what happened? What, what's that? How did it happen for him to be able to look at God and say that, God, you are my peace. He had experienced the peace that somehow, maybe not the image that we have thought about at the very beginning. And what is that? Let me share this to you. As we look at the circumstance of Gideon, we would say this. Number one, there was what? Gideon was living in fear. Gideon was living in fear. It's like what I've said because of what had happened. They were living in fear. The Midianites are, as an enormous army would come and oppress them and take away everything that they owned. They would plant and, they, and, the, and the Midianites would take everything that they planted. So that means you would plant and you would not even enjoy the benefits of what you have planted. So now you see Gideon in verse 11. Here's what it says. The angel of the Lord came down and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belongs to Josh, to Joash the Abizirite. 
where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press. What do you mean by this? And again, what you're witnessing here, some theologian would call us a, would call us a theophany, the appearing of God in human form in the Old Testament, just for him to be able to connect with his people. And look at this, and, and Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press. Why would you even, what, thresh wheat in a wine press? It's a wine press. You're supposed to press wine in a wine press. If you wanted to understand this, here's the picture of that. That is a wine press. Why is Gideon doing that? Because he was living in fear. So he doesn't want to be seen. He's under there uh, threshing some wheat. Because what, what's that? Because he doesn't want the Midianites to see him. Because he doesn't want the Midianites to steal what he was, what the, the, the little wheat that he has. But in that particular moment, imagine this. The whole nation is living in fear. You have Gideon in there living in fear as well. Because what? Because they were what? Sinning and not doing what God had asked them to do. So that's how sin affects us. Sin brings fear. And this is the situation now. And here's what it is. And here's the truth. And maybe we are living in fear because of the, everything that is going on around us. But yet here's the truth here. In the midst of fear, God's presence is our peace. Let me say that again. In the midst of fear, God's presence is our peace. Look at what happened here. While he was stretching, the Lord appeared to him. And here's what God said. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, look at what it says here. He said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you. The presence of God. The Lord is with you. He is a mighty warrior because the Lord is with him. You take that, the Lord is with you, Gideon is nothing. He is mighty because of the Lord's presence. God promised the Lord is with you. And as we look at this story and we look at this encounter, you would notice that from fear and having a conversation with God, here's what happened. Also, here's the situation. Number two is disappointment. Disappointment. Gideon started to what? To share, to just give him a litany of his disappointment. Look at verse uh, 15, uh, 13, uh, the first part. But sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why all of this happened to us? Lord, why? Sometimes maybe that's how you feel. Oh, maybe, yeah, really, I'm a Christian. The Lord is supposed to be with me. Why is this happening? And look at him as he continues with this. Where are, all, where, where are all his wonders to our fathers? Where are all the miracles that God had promised to us? Okay, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us. Look at what he was saying here. He has abandoned us. But the Lord has also what? And put us in the hand of the Midian. As if at this point, Gideon was blaming God for the situation that they are in. He was blaming him. Look at this. I'm disappointed. Look at this. And sometimes even that's how we feel, right? We look at the situation. We look at our life. We look at our marriage. Look at my marriage. What's going on? Lord, I, you said you promised, Lord, that the two shall become one. But somehow, look at my marriage. Lord, it's your fault because you gave me this person. Look at your son and your daughter. What's going on? Lord, what's going on here? Or the situation at home. Or we look at what's going on around us. You know, COVID-19 is ravaging the nation. And you're like, Lord, you said it. You're going to pro you promise that you're going to be with us. You're going to protect us. And what was going on here? And it's because of the situation. He was blaming God. But Gideon forgot that they are there is because of their own doing. Not God. Because they have abandoned the Lord. And here's the truth. If you have those disappointments in your life, as you look at that, examine it. But here's the truth. In the midst of disappointments, God's word brings us peace. And, and look at this. And how the Lord uh, replied to Gideon. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Go in my power. Am I not sending you? You're complaining. You're disappointed. But yet, God already said he's going to be with you. But you, you're still complaining. 
And here's the next one in my observation. Insecurity. Gideon's insecurity came up. Verse 15, but the Lord, Gideon, but Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? Look at the progression here. How can I, how can I save? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Gideon, in the light of the conversation with God, looked at himself and he didn't like what he saw. I am the least. I am the weakest. And Gideon was saying, um, he's just projecting all of this insecurity before the Lord. Isn't that what happens when the circumstance around us, around us change and we are in a position where we can't control? We have fear. We have disappointment. And our insecurity rise up. You look at your marriage. It's not working. Fear, disappointment, insecurities. How? Look at me. It's me. It's my fault. It's this and that. Blame game. Because we're just projecting our insecurity. Look, the Lord answered this in the conversation with Gideon. The Lord answers, I will be with you. And you will strike down all the Midianites together. I will be with you. As if in this conversation, because the circumstance around him is difficult. You know, Gideon was all... Lashing out with God, with fear, with disappointments, with insecurity. But God has been keeping on, uh, keep on saying to Gideon, I will be with you. I will be with you. My presence is going to be with you. And look at this. What's the truth in here as God, in, in, in God's reply? Here's what it is. In the midst of insecurity, God's promise brings us peace. And what is that promise? I will be with you. It doesn't change. And of course, here's what it is. In that, you know, outside situation, and here's the last one that Gideon brought to the Lord, doubt. So we're progressing here. Fear, disappointment, insecurities, and now lastly, doubt. Look at in verse 17, Gideon replied, If now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it's really you talking to me. I don't know about you, but this is kind of like a whole lot of conversation here. I don't know why he still didn't get it, that it's God that is talking to him. But yet, look at this. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and see it before you. Like, okay, I'm going to offer something on the altar. Okay, but let me, give me a sign. Give me a sign if this is really you. Maybe that's you today. You're saying to the Lord, Lord, what is going on around me, God? Lord, I know um, my insecurity is coming. Lord, these things are happening. But now I sense that, uh, Lord, give me a sign. Lord, give me a sign. Look at, you look at this and here's the truth. In the midst of our doubt, God's patience gives us peace. In the midst of our doubt, God's patience gives us peace. And where's that? You look at the verses, and the Lord said, I will wait until you return. You know what happened in that story? He, he, Gideon took, got a goat, killed the goat, prepared an altar, and burned that. And then the Lord touched the uh, offering, and fire came from that when the, when the, when the Lord touched the, the offering. But it took some time, imagine, finding a goat to offer in the altar? Come on. I could just see Gideon, you know, wrestling with that goat, finding the goat, choosing the goat, and God was patiently waiting for him. And it goes back to our awesome God discussion about God's long suffering. He's not rushing us, He's not pushing us, He's patiently waiting for us, patiently waiting for you and I. So maybe you're in that situation today. Because of the changes, the circumstance, not only that you have fear, but you have doubt. But God will patiently wait for you. He's not going to rush you. And what was the answer? Yes, he built an altar. God responded to his offering. That means his worship unto the Lord. God responded. In that particular moment, you would see this, the text that we have read in 22 and 23, when God realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Ah, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. And you have to understand, he was afraid, but yet you see that angel, but the Lord said to him. Some theologian just like what it mentioned is theophany, God appearing in a human form. 
to Gideon. But nonetheless, this is God. And then, because you know what happens? When you see God, some people are afraid because you cannot see God because holiness and unholiness cannot exist together because he thought he's going to die. Yep. But yet, look at this. But the angel said to him, peace, shalom. At that particular moment, in the midst of his fear, in the midst of his what? In disappointment, in the midst of his insecurity, in the midst of his doubt, what did God declare to him? Peace. God didn't do this. Peace, y'all. Mm. Peace. No. Peace. Do not be afraid. Because, because God understood his situation. And look at the statement there. You are not going to die. Just by seeing my face or not going to die because of this, what's going on around you. For some of you, you're watching here today. That's exactly what you feel. Lord, I'm just going to die because this is too much. The situation with my mom, the situation with my family, my physical situation. Been waiting for a, what, a, a baby. But it seems like, Lord, I've been praying and praying. It's nothing is happening. Seems like my body is dead. Peace. Look at this in verse 24. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord and there God what, called it the Lord is peace. Yahweh, Jehovah is peace. Shalom, completeness. Hmm. The completeness, wholeness that he had felt. Let me just share this to you. When Gideon declared that, the, situa the situation and the circumstance around him is still the same. It didn't change. There, the Midianites still exist. They are being oppressed. But yet, he was able to declare, my peace. So then something happened. Because for Gideon, it's not, his peace was not dictated by the circumstance around him. It was actually an experience that he had felt because of what? Because of God's presence. Because of a person. It's not a circumstance. It's not a symbol. It's a person. That's why when you look at, let me just go show this again. When you look at this cycle, I don't know where you are at right now in your walk with the Lord. Maybe you're experiencing God's freedom. Maybe you're living in sin and you're experiencing its bondage or you're crying out to the Lord for humility, in humility and you're, God, change this. I want this. And God is ready to deliver you. And more than anything else, he wanted to extend his peace to you. You know, peace is a person. And if you look at this, haven't you noticed this cycle it's exactly what happened to us, what Christ, what God the Father did when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, for us to experience freedom so that we were not going to be able to live in sin anymore. He has delivered us. For some of you, you already given your life to the Lord. You've experienced the freedom, but yet now you're still living in sin. Now you're in bondage. Cry out to the Lord in humility because he wants to deliver you. You don't have to live in bondage. Look at this in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight, by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. That peace, because of what Christ has done. Here's what it is, because the, the peace that Jesus Christ gives is not the absence of conflict. If not, it's, it's not the absence of uh, uh, of difficulty, but rather that he promised his presence to be with us. That in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of difficulty, we know that his presence is with us. That is exactly what had happened to Gideon. He was able to have peace because of what? Because of God's presence in his life. Let me encourage you today. The greatest deliverer has already been sent to us. And his name is Jesus. 
He came to deliver us from the power of sin and the power of death. And you could experience peace because of him. So as we look at what we're facing today, I don't know what you're facing. Maybe a challenges in your physical incapability because of you wanted to have a kid. I've been mean, keep on repeating that because God put that in my heart. For some of you who are watching this, is that you are praying for a kid, and here's what it is. Just relax. Receive the peace of God. This is not something that you work it out and you just keep on blaming yourself. Or for some, some frustrations in your marriage. That's why insecurities are coming out. Or a friendship or situation. Here's what it is. The peace that Jesus gives is not the absence of struggle or conflict. But it is rather the promise that his presence is going to be with us. And when I look at the cross, let me ask you this. If you are... Going, going back to the question that I asked a while ago, if you look at, you know, the image that comes to mind when you hear the word peace, if you wanted to use a symbol, I would use the symbol of a cross. Because in that cross where Jesus Christ died, that brought us peace. If you wanted to, uh, for me to give you an image of peace, when it's a, maybe a state of rest or tranquility, it has always been the cross still for me. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, when he mentioned this word, it is finished. Because that sacrifice brought me peace with God. That is the symbol of peace with for me. That's why when I look at my situation, when I am, maybe I have fear, and I look at me, I'm disappointed. And I have all my insecurities coming out. I've held my doubt. Then I lift up my eyes to the hills. As the Bible would say, where does my help come from? From the Lord, who's the maker of heaven and earth, who died at the cross for my relationship with him to be restored. Join me in a word of prayer. Lord, I pray for everyone watching here today. And if that's you, you're watching, let me pray for you. If you're asking, Lord, give me peace, your peace. Maybe not the absence of conflict, Lord, but a presence, Lord, just the promise of your presence being with me. And if that's you, I want to pray for you today. Just lift up your hands wherever you're watching. And let me pray for you, Lord. I pray for my brothers and sisters today. Peace is a person. This is not some abstract idea that we have uh, formed in our mind, Lord. It's a person. And the symbol of that is the cross when you died for us. God, I pray for my brothers and sisters. Whatever circumstance that they are in, Lord, they are having fear right now. Because maybe of a loved one being sick in the hospital right now. There's fear. Lord, give them peace. Lord, for some who are watching here today, there's some what, disappointments. Because of the situation in their family, in their marriage, God, I pray you give them peace. For some, Lord, maybe some insecurities. They look at themselves and the task that you wanted them to, uh, uh, that you have given them to do like Gideon, Lord. And they see how really small they are in light of the task that you have uh, given them, Lord. Give them peace. And also for some, maybe doubt, doubting where they are at. Lord, all you're asking from them to stake a, what to take a step of faith. And that said, Lord, I pray for Gail and Ivan, for Anne Sapinoso, for John, for Hubert, for Marvin, for Jerlene, for Paul, for Mark, for Mosa, for Liberty, for Paul Steban, Lord, for Lewis, for Jan C, for Jane. For Cora, for Mommy LV, for Brandon, for Jerome, for JB, for Oliver, Oliver who's watching, for Jem. Lord, I speak peace to them. I speak shalom, Lord, to them. Shalom, Jehovah, shalom, my peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. I speak wholeness and completeness. I speak shalom in the name of Jesus. I pray for Hannah, for Ray, for Joyce. Thank you, Lord, for your peace and for Kim. 
for the Isaac Young. Thank you, God. We honor you, Lord. And for Lucy Lissing, for Mommy Terry as well, and for Daryl Joyce, honor you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody says, Amen and Amen. Amen.